I spent 13 years working in the software industry and I've always had one weakness. Whenever front-end development work came up, I always let somebody else do it. Why? Well, I was afraid. In this video, I'll share what I was afraid of and how that ultimately held my career back and how now I managed to fix that problem so I actually look forward to working on front-end code. And there are no shortcuts here or magic courses that will fix everything, but I will share my experience and it's up to you to figure out what to do with that information. Now, I trained as a Java developer, not out of choice, it's just that's the language they taught on the computer science degree I was taking. So the first job I got was a Java job because that's what I had experience with. And through the rest of my career, all of my jobs were Java development jobs. And over time, I started to specialize in backend REST API development. When you're developing REST APIs, by definition, you are on the back end, and whoever's calling your API often will be a browser. So assuming that there's somebody to develop the REST API and somebody else to develop the client side, then I really had no reason as a back end developer to get into front end development. Or at least that's what I thought. And yes, I I have done some front end over 13 years, but really the last time I did front end was before the whole JavaScript promise and asynchronous function stuff. I just remember having callbacks everywhere and it not being a very nice experience compared with developing code in Java. So fast forward to more recently, and I think my bad experience of JavaScript had put me off. And whenever anything came up which involved front end work, out of eight Java developers, there were always a couple that volunteered for the front end work. And at the time I kind of thought, oh suckers. But now I realize how I was missing out. And yes, I was missing out because I wasn't learning the modern front end technologies that actually don't involve callback hell anymore. But when you're working on a project and you're avoiding a whole part of that project, for example, the front end, that obviously limits how much you learn about the project and how much you learn about the domain in which that project is based. But it hasn't been until the last year that I've decided to take decisive steps to ingratiate myself with the front end. I think it means like, get stuck in. There's a project I've worked on in the last few months that I think has really improved my front end skills to a point where I'm feeling really confident that I can go out and create projects, maybe not the most advanced projects using the best practices, but I can go and create stuff and it's going to work. So if you are a back end developer like me who wants to get into front end or you're coming from some different angle. These three steps are what work for me. And the first one was to pick a project that I actually want to see in the real world myself. And I'm not talking about a notes app or one of those projects that the coding boot camps tell you to make. I'm talking about a problem that you have yourself where you think, man, I just wish there was a bit of code or a website or something that fixed that problem. For me, because I'd been trying to create better YouTube thumbnails, I'd been doing a lot of comparisons of images and having to take screenshots, and it was all getting really frustrating and time consuming. I was sure that there was some software that I could build to make that process easier. Step two is to pick a tool, any tool, pick one you like the name of, Pick one that's popular. So if you search the most popular front-end frameworks, you're going to get things like React, Vue, Angular, Svelte. I had previously used a little bit Svelte on my own personal blog until I realized that it wasn't compatible with some stuff that I wanted to do. So in the end, I picked Vue instead, which seemed to be kind of similar, but also a little bit more popular and a bit more compatible with different frameworks. And once you've chosen a framework, even if you don't really know how to use it very well, it just becomes the challenge of the fact that you know that you need to use this framework to solve this problem. You just need to join the dots between the two things. And for me, that was as simple as following a getting started guide, starting with a Hello World style website and just taking it from there. Which brings us to step three, which is implement the thing and make it public. And yes, saying just implement it is glossing over a lot of problems and a lot of solutions that you'll have to find and a little bit of pain along the way. But if you already have some experience with software development, coming across problems and finding solutions online is just par for the course, really. And with front end, it's not any different. If you haven't tried any of these modern front end frameworks, I think you'll be surprised how pleasant they are to use. And everything in view is split up into components. And each component has the actual code 
and then it has a template down below. And I found how these components fit together makes a lot of sense, even with my back-end mindset. And the make it public part of this, which for me meant just taking my website and making it available on a specific URL, thumbshop.io, just means that I go the extra mile to make sure that this is a product that actually works. It also means that considering this is a problem that I'm solving for me, I can just go to that URL and start using the app. And if you're being really clever about it, maybe when you're applying to jobs, you can say, hey, there's that app that I published. <laughs> Want to check it out? No? Hey? After building and publishing just one front-end web app, I feel like I know enough of the basics that I can pretty much make anything happen that I want to happen, even if I'm not necessarily doing it in the best way possible. And I've got a backlog of features for my web app, and when I look through them, I don't like have a sense of dread of, oh my God, that's front-end code. I wish someone else could do that for me. I'm actually excited to implement it. And yes, it kind of sounds strange that I'm saying this, but I'm excited to learn more about front-end technology. Specifically, I want to learn more about the features of the Vue framework that I'm using and how it can help me to write less code. And aside from that, I want to get better at web page design. So just making web pages more appealing. And I feel like now that I know at least one front-end framework, I'm more well-placed to be able to do that. So that was my back-end developer's experience of learning the front-end. It wasn't anywhere near as scary as I thought it was. So if you put your mind to it, I believe you also can learn the skills. That's all I've got to say. Bye.